Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And this morning we have yet again another amazing guest. As always, you guys always deliver. All right, my friends, the community's on fire. We are on fire. Lots of things happening uh, in the internet marketing world. Lots of opportunity. Let's talk about it this morning. We have an esthetician who's going to be sharing the power of consistency and confidence to attract an audience here on this spooky Halloween, my friends. Okay, so let's get into this. I've got my normal mask that I always wear on today. It's scary enough. Jenna Lee, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Where are you calling in from? West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach, Florida. Good. Did you make it okay through the hurricanes? I did. Actually, we didn't get anything um, in my neighborhood. There was a couple neighborhoods that got smacked by the tornadoes, um, but I didn't get any rain, no wind, nothing. Good. Good for you. Lucky. Yeah. Super lucky. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. So you're an esthetician. That means that you work on faces. Yes. But I'm also a lash artist, so I also okay. do all right well what motivated you pushed you has brought you to the wild wor world of internet marketing and then specifically legendary marketer um well i got into esthetician to do skincare because my skin was always bad so i wanted to do something figure out how to help myself and then help other people and then I got into lash extensions uh, after a rough breakup. I needed something to supplement my income. So I, I took a course. And six years later, I'm looking for something else to do, something else, another way to supplement income and bring in other money and help other people um, to learn how to do the same. And so about a year and a half ago, I was scrolling through TikTok and I saw somebody post a video of um, basically the same pain points that I was going through, stuck, frustrated, all of that. And um, she offered, it was, at the time it was a 15 day challenge. So I took the challenge and by the end of the challenge, I was like, this is what I wanna do. This is right up my alley. Nice. So you're like a serial entrepreneur over the years. You've been like, whether it be a, a tough time, a downtime, you've sought out various side hustles and have not only grown your skills as in the kind of world of esthetician, being an esthetician, and then you went on, on to the lashes thing. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of sense this theme of like serial meaning, Hey, you know, you're always up to something. Yes. You know, you're always up to something. You're always looking for a hustle. You've so what, what do you lean more towards an entrepreneur spirit? I would assume you do, although you also have experience being an employee. What would you say the difference for people coming into this from your experience between an entrepreneur and being an employee is? What sort of mindset do you have to be in? What sticks out or stands out as something that's like this is one of the most important things you need to be doing or possess if you want to be an entrepreneur versus an employee? Well, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're, you're not being an employee. You just go in, you do your nine to five job and you go home and then you're done and that's it. But being an entrepreneur, it doesn't stop. The clock doesn't stop ticking. You just keep, you have to keep going and you have to keep on top of it and you have to stay motivated in order to do that. So it's been definitely a journey and it can be 24 seven, right? Absolutely. 24 seven. Yes. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that it's important to say, like right up front is that your business could require you to be, you know, available, whatever, right? 16 hours a day, like every waking hour, You especially nowadays, because we're doing so much from our phone. So, right. You know what I mean? Like you, in a sense, can be tapped into your business 
every waking hour, you know, and I'm saying have some, you know, obviously have some personal time and boundaries, but for the most part, I'm dialed, plugged into my business every waking hour of the day, anytime I want to pick up my phone and plug in and mm -hmm. check in or do something or communicate with somebody. And what's interesting about that, friends, is that I begin to, I begin to sort of weave and melt my personal and my business life together to where you can't really tell the difference between whether I'm playing and living or whether I'm working. So that's thing number one, is that I don't have this big compartmentalization of my life, which I don't know that it works wonderfully for anybody where it's like, you know what, you may be struggling at home, but you leave that at the door, right? You don't bring your problems to work. And when you go home, you leave work at work. You don't bring work home. That's an extreme compartmentalization that, you know, may not be as particularly healthy for us and also is difficult to transition at five o'clock in the middle of the day or towards the end to, you know, going from work mode to then going home and going into loving family mode. You're exhausted. Mm -hmm. And so thing number two that's powerful and beneficial about the way in which we can work from an entrepreneur standpoint, which could be 16 hours a day, is that I get to work on my business a lot more, more hours, more time. I have more opportunity to slide it into the little cracks of the day that it's a major advantage for me. I don't just, mm -hmm. it, it's not a, a business that I get to run digitally from my phone or my laptop is the opposite of a business that's like, it's like a wood shop where I have to be in the wood shop. And if I'm not in the wood shop working, then nothing's getting created, you know, or if I'm not at the restaurant or if I'm not wherever there's some businesses that are also like jobs. That's what Robert Kiyosaki talks about in the cash flow quadrant, rich dad, poor dad, which is the book that we recommend everybody read is that the thing that makes you the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner and an entrepreneur is that you have systems and people that you're leveraging that are working to do various tasks versus you having to do everything in this business that you own in order to get paid, sort of like a, a masseuse would do who owns her own business. If she doesn't go out there and do a house call and do a massage, she doesn't get paid. She and thought she was going to have this big booming business after she left the studio, only to find out she's simply self-employed. She owns her job. She does not yet have systems, software, marketing, other masseuses, office managers who she's leveraging to operate a business that operates even when she's not there. And so this digital marketing business, this entrepreneurship thing gives us an opportunity to get as close as we can to what I just described as having a full-blown operation because instead of simply leveraging software and people at the beginning of our internet marketing businesses, we leverage things like Facebook, for example, a free tool that allows us to stream a conversation happening at my kitchen table in your home office to hundreds or potentially thousands of people who are watching live are going to catch the replay. Yeah, that is leveraging. And that's what we're teaching you how to do here inside of Legendary Marketer is how to leverage these tools so you can move over into that business owner category and have people and have software doing the work for you because that's exactly what social media allows people to do. They share your stuff. They watch your stuff, right? And then the software or the systems are the robots or the, the tools that we're using to get the job done. So it's kind of a match made in heaven for a startup entrepreneur to and so uh, anyways, I'm ranting a little bit about what I saw as the benefit of internet marketing and, and some of the differences of what I think makes somebody an entrepreneur versus being self-employed and certainly being an employee. What attracted you to this? And is this your first time ever doing anything like this before? Yes. Really? Yes. It is definitely my first time. Um, I've never done digital marketing, internet marketing, any marketing at all, really. So yeah, it's my first rodeo here. Wow. So what's it been like 
for you to go through, you said you went through a course for the lashes thing. So you're kind of somewhat used to going through courses in order to learn a skill. And then you go out and you monetize it. And I love that about you, that you said you took a course, you went out and you made a business out of that for many years yeah. before you then started online marketing or looking to learn this skill. And so what's the process been like for you in terms of going through the education, our education here now, maybe compared to other things that you've done? And then what was it like for you to launch digitally on video versus launch in real life, like I assume you did with the Lash business? Yeah. Um, so the Lash course that I took, it really it was only, it was six years ago. So it was a four hour course in a Dunkin' Donuts conference room. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, in person, just, right? In, in person. person. Okay. It was in person. She gave okay. us a little packet. It was maybe 10 pages. And she stood up there and there was a chalkboard and she wrote on it and said, you know, went through her whole little packet. And then we practiced on a mannequin head for the next like hour or two. And that was it. The only training I ever had. So I had to go and now figure out how to do my own training and how to better my skill. Um, I didn't have anybody there to ask questions to. I didn't have anyone to to guide me. So I kind of just had to watch YouTube videos and kind of figure it out on my own. So wow. that's what I did. And um, so now to transition from going, and I did teach a couple classes in person, which was great and I loved it. Um, but doing it on camera is a little bit different um, just because it's not in person. You don't have anybody there to ask you questions. So you kind of just have to figure out what kind of questions they're going to ask and kind of answer them while you're teaching at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so but anyways, very interesting. I mean, very, very, very interesting process yeah. um, and, and unique experience that you have coming from all of these different, you know, these different uh, backgrounds and sort of side hustle ventures you've tried. Well, what makes this one different? What what about digital marketing do you like? And, and talk to us a little bit about, um, well, let's start there. Like seeing this, what, do, what, do you, what did you like? What do you like? And how is it different than something that's more in person and hands on like like a lash business? Well, I do feel like there's a, a bigger reach when you do it online um, rather than doing it in person. You can only get to so many people um, doing it in person. Um, I don't know. It was just something that I feel like you could tell your story better when you're doing it in digital marketing with the content creation and stuff like that. So. Do you true. see any routes for you to take these skills and apply them to your lash business or to make a business out of the knowledge that you have with the lash business that you've been running? Yes. Yes, because I, there's many topics that I can do digital products for. Like I have my own online course. I just created it. It's up and running. I have um, some a couple digital ebooks where it shows you what the, the uh, importance of social media presence is. Um, I so have you've a, already got your own course that you've created. Yes. O on what topic now? Um, uh, for a certification in, in to become a lash artist. And you've and you've created that course recently. Yes. Since in in kind of learning how to do that and getting that idea since going through here. Correct. The education at Legendary. Interesting. Good for you. Yeah, same with the digital products. Like I, I never did any of that before. So I purchased the this um, blueprints like a year and a half ago, and I kind of sat on them. Yeah. And um, one day something just clicked, and I was like, "Just get up, just do it. Just never mind everything else. Just get this done." So for two last two months, I've been working really hard to get all my funnels, to get the campaign, the email campaigns, and get my digital products up and this online course took me a while to get up and running, but I finally did it and it's all, yeah, all to legendary marketer. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. So like 
this is good. Uh, how long did you sit on things again? And what would you do differently? Or like, what would you advise people to do differently in terms of, you know, the, the dedication or the commitment or whatever of just like going through it, learning the stuff and, and getting into, you know, getting into action, getting into building, getting into launching mode. Mm -hmm. So I, like I said, I got it in April of 2023. Um, I, I don't know. I, I took the course. I went through the, I watched as many videos as I could and I started creating different things. And I actually had a whole Instagram page and a domain, like I did all of it. And then within two months I wasn't seeing results. So I kind of gave up. And then as time went by, I started realizing like, this is, that was a common theme with me. I would start something. And if I, if it wasn't working to my liking or how I wanted it to work, I would just quit. So, and that's what I did with this one. And then I was like, I can't, I, I got to do this. I have to prove to myself that I can actually get this done and, and figure this out. So that's why I restarted again. You just gotta just do it. Just move forward, roadblocks, plow through them, like there's so many issues that I came up with during, you know, trying to make the funnels connecting GoDaddy with system IO. And it, it definitely was not easy, but I finally got everything figured out, worked out and, and stuck with it. I just trying to stay motivated so that I can go further. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable self-awareness. Um, and personal responsibility, uh, like for real. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, there's a book called the six pillars of self-esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. And it outlines six practices that can help people feel good about themselves and essentially are foundational pieces of your self-esteem. One of them is living consciously, being aware of your actions in the world around you, self-acceptance, mm -hmm. okay, being respectful and compassionate towards yourself. Here we go. Self-responsibility, recognizing that you are the source of your own fulfillment. Also that you are the, the source of your, all of your successes and your failures, like owning stuff. There's three more. You guys can go check out the book, do the research, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, read the cliff notes, whatever you want. I'll put it up on the screen here for a moment just so you guys can check it out. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, personal responsibility, what you just did, what you just kind of said mm -hmm. about why things didn't work out for you the first time is the mindset that is I would say that is the difference between an employee and an entrepreneur. You must possess that mindset that you just demonstrated for us versus you don't have to possess that as an employee. And Correct. what that mindset is, is it's that third one on that list right there, that self-responsibility, recognizing that you're the source of your own fulfillment. You're also the source of all everything. And the faster that you take personal responsibility for your past, for your mistakes, for your failures, for things that didn't go your way, for things that didn't work out, you suddenly take all of the power back. You suddenly take all of the power back inside of your life. And you're no longer a victim. People no longer, nobody has any power over you. Nobody's stopping you. You are the one who did something one way and it didn't work out. And now you recognize that you're going to do it differently. And just owning that, you know, you were the one who set it aside. Friends, each one of us could, could it, if, if we admitted that more about our life and our business, you got to lean more into that. I give this example sometimes, which it's the like the player or the coach, the professional player or the coach uh, who in uh, the press conference after the NFL game, we, we're right in the middle of the NFL right now. So it's a unique opportunity to be able to see this. After the, the game, the losing team goes to the press conference and, and usually answers questions. 
And the guys who have the best self-esteem, you'll see, they're the guys who take the most ownership for the loss. Starting with the coach. The coach usually is like, yeah, I didn't have the players ready. I mean, he wasn't even on the field. Some could say that the coach matters. Some say the coach doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, during 60 minutes of a game, the coach, you know, the coach isn't playing, but that coach damn sure is going to take responsibility for that loss. Yeah. Um, so generally, I just wanted to kind of shout that out and give some additional reasoning behind why that sort of an attitude that you just demonstrated in how you answer that question is so important as an entrepreneur. Um, what comes up for you as you hear me talking about this personal responsibility piece? And is this a, was there a line that you drew in the sand here at some point? I would assume it was two or three months ago, something when you started back up where you said enough is enough. There's no more, there's no victim stancing in my life. I own, I am, I am in control of, I am powerful enough and I am the creator of the things that I have in my life. Did that moment happen for you? Is, is that, did that happen? In, or, I mean, maybe it wasn't as big of a burning bush moment as I'm describing all hyping it up. It was yeah. just a simple realization you had in the shower or on a walk. I don't know. But how did you really come to that conclusion that I need to take personal responsibility? That's the only way for me to have the success that I want. Yeah, because <clears throat> I'm just tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I'm tired of somebody else di dictating when I can go on vacation, what I can do, when I can do it, and when I can go on a doc to a doctor's appointment. I just, you know, I have to work in order to get paid. And if I don't work, then I can't pay the bills. So I don't want to be there anymore. I want to be in a place where I can do what I want when I want, go to the gym when I want, go you know, take a yoga class if I want, or a hip hop class or anything, any sort of other class that a hobby that I, that I like, you know, that I enjoy doing. I want to go walking and jogging and I can't, I just can't do any of that right now because I am so consumed with everything else. So I'm working towards that goal. That's a goal for me. Yeah. So you, you do, you do dancing, you do hip hop dancing. I don't, but I think it would be fun to take a class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I feel you. Yeah. No, for sure, for sure. It's it's totally cool. And I know that because um, I my daughter is an acro and ballet dancer. And then my buddies just started taking dance lessons and trying to get me to come. I probably will. Um, and so, you know, I, I have lots of dancing going on and I love to dance myself. Hip hop, uh, that's going to be one I'll leave to you. I just kind of like to do the two step, you know what I mean? Just kind of keep it, you know? Yeah. Anything with too much movement, you know, I might throw a hip out or something over here. Um, but yeah. uh, this is great. This is this is good stuff. This is really interesting. And um, what what has been easier than you thought it would be and you know what's been what's been harder than you thought it would be about this um the easier part is actually creating these products and the online course it wasn't as hard as i thought that it would be the hardest part for me is being on camera and creating that content that's that is literally the hardest part that i'm trying to to get over but yeah, the easiest thing is just creating with the knowledge that I already have. Yeah. So what's what's difficult about being in front of the camera and what are you doing to overcome that? Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not used to being in front of the camera. I'm, it's, I find it hard to talk to a camera than an actual person in front of me. Do you? <laughs> yeah. But um I don't know. I just, just the thought of how, do I look weird? Do I look okay? Like just those things. But I'm I'm trying to stay on camera more so that I can. If you look on my page, I have more of like those videos where you kind of um, in at reenact like what somebody's saying. It's you saying it, but with their voice. So yeah. I have a couple of those that I've been doing, just trying to get used to being on camera. Yeah. No, I mean you're at the you're 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 here early in the game, and I mean 
you know, you have an opportunity right now to like spend the rest of 2024 and 2025 just in absolute massive creation mode, pushing the boundaries, pushing, making, getting uncomfortable, doing things that feel uncomfortable. Of course, yes. all safe, all within the business context here. Yes. Um, but doing things that, that make you feel uncomfortable specifically and i do i think i think being on camera is a is a skill that people need to learn and need to practice and mm -hmm. it's a needed skill nowadays I, I i really i really believe that being in being involved in a community and taking classes and education on how to be better in front of the camera be here what we're doing here at legendary if the only thing that you gain out of this experience, friends, is that you become better on camera, I think it's money and time well spent because it's just a skill that's going to become more and more important, more and more useful, more and more required, especially as you move more into working more you know, virtual or digital jobs or, and or doing business on the Internet. It's how you're going to communicate with people. And so it's just, it, we're never going backwards. Human touch and human interaction and seeing the human face is never going to not be in. It's never going to not be important. It's never going to, technology is never going to take over to where we no longer want to look at human faces and talk and interact with human beings. We don't want, nobody wants a world where everything we're interacting with robots or AI or whatever. That's not the direction society is moving. Yeah. And so getting good on camera, understanding that it's going to continue to be a need, it's going to continue to be a, re a requirement, it's going to continue to be a high income skill. I would assume uh, that's why you're pushing yourself and it's getting better, I, I would say, right? And and you you're great uh, today live. Have you ever have you ever gone live before? Um, on TikTok, yeah, I've done live on TikTok okay. a few times. So one of my best friends, she's PR. She's she has a public relations firm, which is who I work for, and she has to go live on on TikTok and Instagram sometimes. So she'll ask me to go on with her, and I will. But it's not that I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying. Yeah, you're doing it. You're practicing. You're pushing yourself, and that's that's a great that's a great thing. Uh, you're perfectly imperfect, as the sign behind uh, you says, and it's wonderful, Jenilee. It looks great on you. It looks great Thank on you. you. Yeah, you're 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 awesome. You're doing a great job. I am I am uh, really excited to see where this takes you. Excited to see what you do with it. You're creative. You go after what you want. You, you're a side hustle queen. You've done it before. You can do it again. And this time, grow it into an even bigger, more legitimate business that, you know, has software and people working within it, right? Uh, ultimately, kind of like what I was talking about earlier with a cash flow quadrant. And then Take the money from that business and invest it and get your money working for you. Complete the cash flow quadrant. Become an investor as well. Uh, that's one of the things I always talk about at our events, uh, you, usually always on Sunday, about the power of proper uh, cash cow creation, which is your digital business leading into proper money management, leading into proper investing and what that can create for you. Uh, it can change your life and you don't need, you know, decades and decades to do it. Right. You, you all would be absolutely amazed by what you could create in the next, you know, five to 10 years. Absolutely amazed by what you could create in the next five to 10 years. And oh, by the way, Bonnie King's on the call. Shout out to Bonnie King, the queen, Bonnie King. She says it's the favorite, her favorite part of the mastermind. And she'll often pipe up and say, hey, what Dave here is talking about uh, was something that allowed me to become more financially stable or completely financially stable. She's paid off her, her home. She's She's got no debt. Um, maybe a little here or there. I don't know. I can't confirm zero, but I know no large debt. And, um, you know, she's got a wonderful life. She's 
you know, she's, she's doing great. Uh, and, um, one of the things that I, that I also talk about that I know she's done and she's also earned here within legendary, she's one of our most highest decorated, uh, you know, people ever within legendary. I mean, just from the things she's accomplished as a BPA, she's now an accountability coach. If any of you want to have, let me just say this. If any of you want to have an accountability coaching call, a free accountability coaching call with Bonnie King, the queen, then email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com. Just put in the subject line accountability. Got to get the shameless plug in here while I've got Bonnie <laughs> like up. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm a marketer. I got to. Yep. Gotta I got to make an offer. I got to give a call to action here. But honestly, this is this will be the this will be one of the best you know, 30 minutes or whatever time you get with her. It's, it will be some of the best time, if not the best time you've spent all year with someone who has helped more people than anybody that I know here, students going through in terms of just clarity, direction, inspiration, accountability, uh, just knowledge. And so if you want a free accountability coaching call, you want to get on actual the phone or Zoom with Bonnie and have a conversation, we're right now booking people in to have that accountability coaching call, that free accountability coaching call. She'll, of course, tell you about our accountability coaching program. She loves our product. She never sells. She only just explains and shares details. She's the queen uh, at just people love her. Even when they buy stuff from her, they spend – and they love to give her money. They, they, people love to spend money with Bonnie. She just creates such a wonderful experience. But even if they don't, they say that was the most valuable time that I've had in a long time. With some people always walk away saying that they always brag on her. And it's not just her, it's her offspring too. She creates, uh, uh, many of you may have worked with Sydney or gotten some messages back from customer support. That's Bonnie's daughter. It's, it's in the bloodline. It's just who these people are. All right. So if you want a free accountability coaching call with Bonnie, you can email me accountability to Dave at legendarymarketer.com. Now back to the regularly scheduled program. That's sort of like the sponsored part of the, of the show. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's Jenna Lee, you, you are, um, you're blossoming, you're growing and what's going to happen for you in the next, you know, few years is going to be, is going to be very exciting. It's going to be very, um, it's going to be great to watch and see. It's also going to be great for you to experience, uh, when somebody really commits and says, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I realized my, my, the flaws of my ways previously, yeah. you know, what I mean? and I'm not going to do that again. Like I'm going to like follow through mm -hmm. and we are just the Kings and Queens of starting shit, not following through. I, it's just because there's so much opportunity out there in this. It's like, there's so much opportunity that so many of us can't get started with anything because we've got too many choices. What a wild there was a time in human existence that we had no choices. It was like, wow, I'm waking up today. I hope I don't get eaten by a saber toothed tiger. <laughs> and now look at us, look at us now, you know? Yeah. So there's a lot to be grateful for. Jenna Lee, I'm grateful for our conversation this morning. Me too. Um, thank you for coming on and please come back and see me again in the near future. Okay. And keep us posted on your journey. Thank you so much for having me. It's All right. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, Jenna Lee. Oh, all right. Bye. Bye-bye. All, right. all right, my friends, you can find Jenna Lee. You can follow, you can support, you can lift her up, go give her a little bit of love over on Instagram. Um, whew, I'm going to bring her back in here. I just want to ask her a question here. What, what's your, what's your, what's your um, um, handle here? Say. Lashaholics Anonymous. Okay. Lashaholics Anonymous. Got it. For all the all right. <laughs> what? For all the lash addicts. I like I like this. I'm gonna have to go check this out. This lash thing. Um, <laughs> I know it's not for guys, but it's just okay. it's, it's quite fascinating, yeah, you know, because it's like the tiny little sub niche, right? It's like this. It there's a lot going on there, and there's a lot of potential there in the lash niche. Yes. 
Agreed. I, I mean, there really is. There really is. So I'm excited to see kind of where you take things and what you do. And I really am. You're, you're, I, I really like that you're already working in that niche too, just at least having something going there. So, okay. Lashaholic, Lashaholics Anonymous. Yes. <laughs> Holy smokes, gentlemen. All right. Get out of here. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. All right, my friends, uh, Lashaholics Anonymous. it's on the screen. Holy Christmas. What a freaking handle. What an interview. What a morning. It's Thursday. It's Halloween. Holy smokes. Oh, my God. I am uh, I'm feeling the spooky vibes this morning. I really am. But um, I'm just going with this mask this year. Just keeping it simple. Uh, don't want to do anything too scary. Don't want to. Don't want to. Don't want to rattle the world too much. My friends, have a safe night. Uh, have a good day, and um, we'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary. I gave you lots of things to think about and do on this episode, including just starting your education or restarting your education by going to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll and getting started with a challenge, enrolling in the blueprints, which we talked about, or coming to a mastermind, which I talked about as well. You can do all three of those things over at legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. If you're looking for uh, an affiliate opportunity, you want to partner with a company this year or next year, whatever, um, who stands behind our products 100%, who uh, has an amazing team of people serving, coaching, uh, you know, creating every single day. Uh, you know, we are just obsessed about helping our clients get results. If you want to represent our brand and go out there and market our products, you can join our affiliate program for free. There's nothing, no requirement, no qualifications or anything. Uh, it's a single level affiliate program. You can head over to legendarymarketer.com and just click on the affiliates tab. There's information there on how to get started. We're looking for new affiliates. We're looking for new brand ambassadors. We're looking for new people to partner with, to take their operation, their business, uh, as well as our brand to the next level and, and just reach more people to help inside of your audience. So if you think uh, that your people would like to learn the digital marketing skills that are still needed, still required, and are going to continue to be required uh, through 2024 and into 2025, Go join our affiliate program and uh, go help rep our uh, our products, our services, our courses. And uh, you're going to be really excited, no matter who you are, for some new things that we have launching here over the next week or so. Uh, so go join our affiliate program if you want to help represent our brand. And as I said, our accountability coaching is the, the final thing that we have going on here. If you want a free accountability coaching call with Bonnie, you can email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com. You can just type the word accountability in the subject line, and I will actually CC in Bonnie, and you two can set up a call to have a free call to get some information just about how you can become more accountable to yourself, uh, strategies you can use, what's working with other clients within our community that we're working with. Um, and of course, we'll tell you about our six month accountability coaching call to help you to step into the next best version of yourself over the next six months. My friends, we'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary. As always, be great, be legendary. Get out of here, my friends. Love you all. Thanks for the love. Peace.